It finally happened. Healthy James Harden. Scary. Scary hours. Oops, wrong year. James, he hasn't played, though. Dude, he's uh, he's like missed. What happens if he doesn't? Oh, he got traded. He's healthy now. He's missed the last three with a <laughs> with a hammy. <laughs> <laughs> Horn is in Philly after giving up on his team one year after getting there, and Ben Simmons is on a team that he'll actually play for. Bruh. But honestly, if they're happy, that's important because at the end of the day, they're human beings and they'll probably contribute more to their team. Now, I took my time to dive deep into this trade, and I think that one of the most important parts of this trade is actually not getting enough attention. What is up, dudes, cadets, ballers, players? It's your boy MJ. The Lakers really did nothing. It's fine. It's not. But forget that. The whole trade went down like this. James Harden and Paul Millsap for Ben Simmons, Seth Curry, Andre Drummond, and two first round picks. Harden also opted into his next year of his contract as part of the deal. There was also a lot of talk including Matisse Thybul, but ultimately this is what they settled with. And I'm gonna break down each team and their lineups. But I think the 76ers have one important thing to consider. First, rip to the free throw line. If y'all liking the content, feel free to subscribe since over 75% of y'all aren't. There's a few videos next week that are gonna be pretty important. And drop a like cause us fans won. The Sixers are already among the NBA's bottom in three-point attempts. Not because they don't have shooting. Maxi is shooting 40% from three, Danny Green is nearly at 39%, Tobias around 36-37%, Curry was at 40%. No, it's because of Joel Embiid and his dominance in the low post. It's why it's no surprise that they're also 28th in pace. Now we've seen Harden paired with a post-dominating center star before, Dwight Howard. And before y'all go, oh, Dwight ain't all that, man led the magic without any second star, had a whole offense designed around him getting the ball into the post that actually worked, was a three-time defensive player of the year, five-time All-NBA first team, and when he came to the Rockets in 2013, Howard was still regarded as a star, a dominant big man. Not to the stature of MVP candidate Joel Embiid is right now, but still great. So stop with the goddamn disrespect. Embiid leads the league in posts of frequency and he scores 9.1 points per game off the post. More than four above the number two player in the league on post ups, Jokic. Howard often complained that Horn wouldn't give it to him in the post, and while there weren't stats tracking post touches before Howard came to the Rockets, each year on the Rockets, his post touches got cut by nearly half. It was pretty visible. James Harden is not Harden of 2015. He's not the same ball dominant, 15 dribbles per possession, 40% usage rate guard. He's an improved playmaker who's lost his burst. That, or he's got another fat suit that he's about to take off and start driving by everyone? But in this case, history can't repeat itself. On paper, the fit seems perfect. A guard who's great at pick and rolls, a big man that can also space the floor. Joel as the role man gets 1.16 points per possession in the 61st percentile. So not amazing, but above average and it should improve with Harden. But if you look at the games, Harden's gonna have to do a lot more than just dump the ball to Embiid because Harden is Horrible off ball. Man just stands at half court, barely moves, and once the ball is off Harn's hands, it's almost like he's done with the possession. And if that continues, then it's gonna hurt the Sixers. Harden's also not a great catch and shoot three point player. We saw it with Durant giving him open looks, and well, he's shooting 30% from three on catch and shoot threes. In fact, Harden is better at shooting after one dribble or even three to six dribbles than catch and shoot. The hope is that they can figure this out, but that will require a compromise from both. But Embiid is the better player right now. He's the one that has it going. Joel showed that he's like ball handlers like Jimmy Butler, who are willing to score and distribute so hopefully it's the same with Harden. And Doc Rivers, well let's just hope that both Doc and Harden 
don't have a playoff meltdown. No skill at all. <laughs> On to Nets. I mean, wow. If you're going to lose Harden, what a return. Now, Ben Simmons isn't injured. He cited mental health as a reason for not playing. If that's true, then I really hope he's getting the help he needs. But he also said that after demand a trade that the Sixers didn't immediately oblige for, and after he ghosted his teammates for a while, not giving much explanation. When the Sixers said that they were comfortable not trading him, that's when he said he was mentally not ready to play. He got fined for games he missed, refused to meet with medical specialists until weeks later. Joel Embiid was not happy. I hope he didn't just make up the mental health stuff because that's not okay and that's disrespectful to people who actually have mental health issues. Also, that's just irresponsible. And him just using that as a way to get what he wants should be punished because now he's excited and ready to come back. He may even join them in their next road trip. I don't know the full details on everything so I'm not gonna say more. In fact, if Ben wants, he could just come back right away since nothing is physically wrong. So that could hurt the Nets bleeding right now because they just came off a 9 game losing streak. Unless they want to lose more games to have the maximum number of road games in the playoffs so Kyrie can play more games? But even when KD comes back, the Nets could stop playing him so many minutes. I warned against this in my Nets have a problem video. Anytime your coach says, I don't know what options we have other than to play him less and lose more, you're in trouble. Third quarter. We know Ben Simmons is solid in the regular season, so that helps preserve Durant for the playoffs. Adding Andre Drummond to play non-Ben Simmons minutes is actually amazing because defensively this season, Drummond has done a good job protecting the pain and any defense is welcome on this Nets team. His defensive rating of 106 is fourth on the Sixers and that comes mainly independent of Joel Embiid's minutes. I think adding Seth Curry is huge for the Nets especially because Joe Harris is out right now. You could have lineups with Ben as center with Kyrie, Curry, Harris, Durant and without Kyrie, Patty Mills is still there. Again, more importantly, Simmons is a good defender and the Nets have plenty of offense already. The Nets again all and be a defensive player. And let's not forget, Ben is still a point guard, so he can still run offense for games Kyrie isn't there. And if KD doesn't like what he sees, he can just take the ball from the inbounds and do it himself. Something that wasn't an option with Joel Embiid. Ben can be a guard at times, but he doesn't have to be because the Nets have plenty of ball handlers and plenty of scoring. He's free to be a Lamar Ohm type of player. He's free to not even score because they have an obscene amount of shooting and they just don't require him to even shoot. Heck, just replace Blake Griffin in the lineup with Ben Simmons and you're still much better off. So yes, the rare win-win scenario because both James Harden and Ben Simmons want out and their teams need to get something back in return. And they did. And most importantly, both teams can finally move forward. The players know now what it is and they can just lock in. They don't gotta deal with the shade of Harden or not knowing who's getting traded alongside with Ben. The fans win, but let's not just assume that everything will be great. Let's wait and watch. And who knows, maybe both of these teams face each other in the first round of playoffs. Please, NBA, make that happen. We need, we need to see Harden versus Durant first round. Make it happen. But what do you think? Which of these teams is better off? The Lakers really did nothing. Man, they better buy some players out, man. Same with the Knicks. What y'all doing? The all-day notification want to shout goes to LaRon Chance. Thanks for the all-day support. And if you're still here, you are real ones to comment scary hours, so I know. Drop a like if you like the video and subscribe, turn noise on if you really like the video. It really helps the channel out. It's your boy MJ. We out.